What'd you get me out for? <laughs> They're not going to applaud again. <laughs> Well, I just want you to open the show again because you opened it so beautifully, only we weren't on the air. Oh? Yeah, and uh, good luck. <laughs> Are you ready? Why did they shove me out here? Huh? Are we on? My name, Jose Comanda. My name, Groucho Marx. Wow! I've got a secret brought to you tonight by Green Whip, the whipped coffee with country fresh flavor. From General Food. Live from New York, here is I've Got a Secret, starring Gary Moore. Well, it's going to be a wild night, I can tell, just by the way it's starting. Good evening. Welcome to our show. And in spite of the kind of summer weather that we've been having here in New York for I don't know how long now, it's hard for us to realize that it is Halloween time. So let's meet the goblins on our panel. First, there's Bill Goblin and Betsy Spook <laughs> and ghastly, a uh, ghostly Henry Morgan and bewitching Bess Myers. <laughs> Now, panel, if you're all set, we're all set, and we'll welcome our first contestant, please. Will you come in, sir? Good evening. Please. Nice to have you with us. Will you tell our panel, please, what your name is and where you're from? Charles Baxter, Brooklyn, New York. Charles Baxter from Brooklyn, New York. Now, panel, we've had a kind of a, a, kind of a tradition on this show invo involving uh, Halloween pumpkins. A few years ago, we had a pumpkin with a light bulb powered by electric eels, if you'll remember. That was kind of oogie. And then the next year, we lit a pumpkin using an ordinary grapefruit as the power source. Actually, the acid in the grapefruit was converted into a battery. And this year, we're back with another pumpkin and another system. Mr. Baxter, will you light our pumpkin for this Halloween, please? There she goes, she's all lit up. Happy Halloween. And now, sir, are you secure? All right, if you'll whisper your secret to me, we will find out how you are lighting up our pumpkin on this Halloween. How about that? All right, now, panel, uh, the secret obviously concerns the methods used uh, to, uh, to light this pumpkin. And we'll start, uh, well, let's start with Betsy Palmer. All right, Mr. Baxter, um, is whatever it is that's generating the power inside of that little round sphere? Yes, it is. Marvelous. Uh, Good. I'm glad you like that <laughs> question, Henry. He said it's a marvelous question. I may just guess this right off the bat. <laughs> is there atomic energy oh, in there? No, no. Oh! Henry, don't fool around with that girl. She's always been smart, Diane. <laughs> well, let me introduce Charles Baxter to you a little more thoroughly. Mr. Baxter is project engineer for the Atomic Energy Commission. And this little globe that you're looking at, this one over here, which is about five inches in diameter, I would estimate, that that is an atomic energy plant. Now, what is the source of the atomic energy in this container? Well, Gary, the power that's uh, being generated inside this small sphere comes from a very small uh, valve of plutonium-238. And this is a marvelous uh, invention indeed. Uh, we've designed it to last for about five years without any maintenance. Uh, it's one of two that's currently being used in space satellites. And we have many other uh, units, uh, larger size for buoys, uh, remote weather stations at the North and South Pole, we use them for undersea generators and very, very uh, many other uses. That would keep this pumpkin lit for five years without any without maintenance? Without any maintenance sure. at all. Well now, well, now let's transfer that into terms of coal. How much coal would it take to produce the same amount of power as this is producing for a period of five years? You would lead, uh, uh, need at least a truckload of coal to 
take the place of the power that's being generated in this small unit for five years. Gracious mm -hmm. sakes. And it is similar to one. This is not a mock-up. This is a working one. And it is similar uh, to ones that are now in use in satellites that are now in orbit. Now, I imagine it would be a little dangerous to open this thing up. But backstage, we have a cross-section of a similar one. And to explain just how it works, we have the gentleman who was responsible for developing it and who is also director of the small power systems for the Martin Company down in Baltimore, Maryland. Dr. Jerome Morris. There we go. Evening, Dr. Morris. Good evening, Gary. Nice to have you with us. Well, thank you. It's nice to be here. Now, this is a mock-up of an atomic uh, generator? Yes. Uh, this, uh, this is based on the same principle that the smaller unit uh, mm -hmm. is uh, based upon. Uh, however, this is designed for earthbound applications, the other being compact, lightweight, designed for space. Now, it works in the following manner. Two of the uh, basic parts are, one is the fuel capsule itself. Now, this contains a radioactive material. Now, the, the radioactive material uh, can work for us, or, for us uh, if we can absorb the radiations and generate heat. Now, with a quantity of heat, we can then convert uh, this heat into electricity uh, using thermoelectric materials. Now, the principle under, under which this operates uh, is uh, one in which the uh, two uh, dissimilar metals are joined. And in the joining process, if we maintain the opposite ends at different temperatures, uh, we can cause a current to flow. So basically, we have a heat source uh, passing, conveying its heat to a direct conversion device, mm -hmm. uh, which is a completely static system and has no moving parts. I think it's, uh, I, I hope that you realize, too, that this is a sliced away model, that uh, normally this, which would be made of what, lead, I imagine? This is, this is actually spent uranium. Spent uh, uranium, which acts yes. as a shield right. to protect anybody working around it. Yes. Actually, the radiation flux about a meter uh, from the source, or about a yard from the source, would be roughly equivalent to that of your wristwatch. Well, gentlemen, it's been just fascinating. We want to give our thanks to the AEC and to the Martin Marietta Corporation for coming down here and lighting our pumpkin this year. Sir, thank you very, very much. <laughs> We'll be back with you again in just a moment, but first, let's watch this. Well, panel, at this moment, I'm going to have to ask you to put on your blindfolds. You'll be happy to know that you'll be able to remove them as soon as each of you has finished his individual round of questioning. So with the blindfolds all in place, let us introduce this evening's special guest, and I do mean a special gentleman indeed. What can I say after I say, Groucho Marx? <laughs> Sounds like we're among friends. Let's have a seat here, Groucho. All right. As uh, always, it's a pleasure to have you back on our show. And I'm delighted to hear that you have written a, a brand new book. Would you tell us the title of it? Oh, uh, well, that's a rather difficult category, Gary. Uh, can we skip it and go on to some entertainment? <laughs> You're the first guy I know who doesn't want to plug for his book. Happens to be a very funny book, friends, and the name of it is Memoirs of a Mangy Lover. <laughs> Which, if you will forgive my saying so, is a very provocative title. Uh -huh. I take it this is, uh, this is your life story? Well, if you take it, that's what it is. But it is actually only up to the age of five. <laughs> it's like a wild childhood. Well, it's a funny book. Now, if you whisper your secret to me, we'll reveal it to the folks at home. Well, I don't think it'll be necessary, Gary, because I think the audience already knows my secret. And if there's anyone in the audience who doesn't already know it, then I don't think they're worthy of the name audience. Well, all right, I'll I got a that. couple of other for them, but I don't think it's on <laughs> Well, panel, the clue to Groucho Marx's secret is something he is doing, and we'll start the questioning. Well, let's start with, let's start with Beth. Groucho. Uh, did you suggest did... I start with Beth? No, 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 I'm suggesting. <laughs> no, we start with Beth. Oh, sort of group therapy. <laughs> Groucho, are, are you and Gary alone over there in your corner? Uh, just a moment. I, I don't think so. The cameraman's here, but I, he doesn't count. No, you're not surrounded by any pretty girls or anything like that, are you? That's a customary environment, I think, for well, you. Well, you, you certainly made a point, and I certainly hope we could bring it up. <laughs> but there were no are, girls to bring up. Are you changing your attire in any way? Uh, am I changing my attire in any way? Your attire. Ch changing your attire. 
Well, you... as long as you understand it, you change it. <laughs> no, I don't happen to be. No, you're, are you remaining where you are? You're still sitting next to Gary? Uh, yeah, as close as I dare. I see. Uh, your voice sounds a little strange, as though you were speaking in something. Why yeah, you I'm were... talking through my mouth, and it's a little confusing. <laughs> $20 down, $60 to go. You may remove your blindfold, Bess. Don't tip off anything that you see. And we go, please, to Bill Cullen. Uh, Groucho, when I ask a question, which I'm about to, is it you who answers me? Uh, it certainly is. Uh, at least it better be. Or one of us won't be paid. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I, both I, of us won't be paid. I, I agree with Bess in the sense that the voice is a different timber in the voice. Uh, well, uh, maybe I got a tree in my throat. <laughs> <laughs> is there anyone on the stage beside the panel and, and the cameraman and that, beside Groucho and Gary? Anyone? Uh, what he wants to know, Groucho, is, that, is there anybody out here aside well. from you and me? Well, there's a whole audience out there. <laughs> I think we have to say that, yes, there is somebody else out here. Yes, it's you. <laughs> oh, I knew I'd seen him before somewhere. All right, $40 down, $40 to go. We go, please, to Betsy. Uh, Groucho, you sound as though you're inside of something, are you? You sound as though I'm inside of something? Yes. Well, I hope so. Are we doing this in a tent? No. Oh, no. Are you on, inside of something on the stage? You mean, if I, am I wearing stretch panties? <laughs> <laughs> are you inside of... Something, say, besides that chair that you were sitting on when you first That's came That's by out. John Gunther. Yes, I read that book. <laughs> <Yes>. Inside Ralph <laughs> Very dark, Martin. too. Uh, is this something physical that's uh, being done uh, with you? Mm, uh, well, I would say so, yes. I heard some chingling, uh, chinking, like clanking of uh, That chains. was my paycheck. <laughs> some All right, $60 down and $20 to go. We go, please. To, uh, Betsy, you may remove oh. your mask. And we go to Henry Morgan. Uh, Groucho, I don't uh, mean to sound uh, the way it's going to sound, but you sound as though you had your head in a bottle. <laughs> uh, was that supposed to be an insult? No. That's not true. I had my bottle in my head a little while ago. <laughs> May I join you? And later I'll give you a swig. <laughs> um, are, you, are you and Gary are you both... a drinking man? Uh, you and Gary both inside something? Inside the bottle. Are you on a Gunther. shelf up at Harvard? <laughs> and it's not easy because I don't even have a sail. No, I don't think that... Uh, 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 your answers sound a little dishonest. Why don't you take your mask off and look at us? If you have a strong stomach. All right. Look at Surprise. Oh, oh, for oh, goodness sake. Take me out on you. No, that's all right. As a matter of fact, I tell you, on one of the rare occasions I ever cheated on the panel, and I did cheat. You cheated off the panel, too. <laughs> you, cheated oh, off regular, the panel. you cheated off the panel many a time. I but they cheated something. I'm trying to get a word in. You well, want to bet? Uh, yes, what's the word you want to get in here? Huh? And I hope it's a secret because we won't repeat it, will we? <laughs> And that goes to your friends. I, I didn't even know I was there. Who's imitating you? <laughs> you are. You, really? you well, are you for peanuts, and I can't get a job anymore. <laughs> <laughs> if you worked in a zoo, you'd have to work for the same thing as I do. This is remarkable. You know, th this, of course, is, is uh, the famous Dayton Allen from television. I'm sure you all know Dayton. But the funny part about it is not only does his voice sound like him, but... It's... But he doesn't look like me. <laughs> But Actually, you know, I am him. You know, he can make his mind. I wish he mind. was, and I could go home. I think we are home. <laughs> well, that well, certainly comes as a shock to the wife, won't it? Well, Yours or mine? I don't care. <laughs> why, don't, why don't both of you grouchos go upstairs, try to figure out which one is who, Thank you both very much for being here. Good luck with the book. Thank Dayton you. Dayton Allen, thanks you a million. Thank the book you. once more? No, if you care to. Memoirs of a Mangy Lover. Good, 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 yeah. good luck, Mangy. Yeah. 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 He's still saying, my name is Jose Menes, and good evening. Let's uh, welcome our final contestant, please. Will you come in, young man? <laughs> he 
It's been like that all night. Do. <laughs> all right, young man, will you tell us what your name is and where you're from? My name is Rusty Steubing, and I'm from San Antonio, Texas. Rusty Steubing from San Antonio. Now, Pamela, this young gentleman has a big smile on his face for two reasons. First of all, Groucho's been kidding the pants off of him back there. But more important than that, he has a big smile because he has just won a $5,000 prize. So, Rusty, if you whisper your secret to me, we'll find out what you won the prize for. <laughs> Good luck. Now, panel, to help you classify Rusty's secret, the clue concerns what he did to win the $5,000, and we'll start the game at the top of Bill Cullen this time. Uh, was the $5,000 you won Rusty in cash? Uh, I mean, as opposed to a scholarship or something like that? It, it was, wasn't cash form? It was in a... It check. was in a check. Check, yeah. Check. Okay. <laughs> right. He has spent a lot of time with Groucho back then. <laughs> Uh, Rusty, does the briefcase that Groucho carried out here for you have anything to do with the way you won the $5,000? Yes, it does. Is, is part of that which helped you win the $5,000 in the briefcase you brought out here? Yes, it is. Is it something that you made that is in the briefcase? No. Something that you broke? <laughs> no, sir. Something that you collected? Uh, and not in the sense of collecting stamps or coins or something like that. Something that you, that you just happened upon. I mean, it just fell into your possession. Is that possible? Yes, sir. Well, you, 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 you went out and bought them, didn't you? Yes. Mm -hmm. He bought these things, but they could not be referred to as a collection, I wouldn't think. Except that they are, there are more than one of them. $20 down, $60 to go. We go please to Betsy. Um, was this contest available, Rusty, to more people than just you and people in your town? Yes, it was. Was it a nationwide sort of thing? Yes, it was. Was it um, advertised in magazines or newspapers? Yes. It was. It was written about in, it was written about in, uh, in newspapers. In newspapers? As a, as um, does, does it have to do with uh, newspapers themselves? No, it doesn't. All right, there's $40 down and $40 to go. We go, please, to Henry Morgan. Rusty, did, are, uh, are the things that you have in the case, things that you got, like, one each from a lot of other people? No. Did you, were there other people involved? Yes, there had to be other people, other people involved. In the sense that you got something from other people? Oh, no. No. Oh, no? These are manufactured objects which he purchased, but which he needed to achieve uh, that which is expressed in his secret. Uh, all right, did you, did you buy different things and put them together so that they would work? No, sir. It doesn't make anything. No. Whatever you have in there. No, sir. It just sits there. <laughs> in the dark. No. Um, gee whiz. Uh, uh, $60 down, $20 to go. We go, please, to Bess. Now, Rusty, first I, you know, you look like the chairman of a corporation when you walked in. <laughs> Shoulders back and wonderful smile. Was this some kind of educational competition that you entered? No, it wasn't. No? Uh, would these things in the attache case be considered scientific? No. no. <laughs> are they uh, solid? Let's say, are they made? Would it help us to know what they were made of? Uh, it would only confuse me because they were, they were made of something in these days entirely different than, than what they were made of in my day. Was the contest held through the school at all? Did it have anything to do with school? No. No. Um, I have no Apparently, we've lost the $80. Marble? If you, you were observant. Are they marbles or something like that? Something like that, yes. There has been a whole resurgent fad all over the country, from New York down to San Antonio, Texas, of kids spinning tops. Oh, no. And Rusty has gone to the top in the field. He is the national top spinning championship. Oh. <laughs> No, they don't make them. Well, they make some of them out of wood, but most of them are made out of, out of plastic. And uh, things that this young man can do. Well, first of all, Rusty, let me ask you this. Uh, how long ago, I mean, now you're national champion, how long ago did you first start spinning tops? I started spinning tops in January. So less than a year, he became national champion, and uh, you also won a regional contest of some kind. How long had you been uh, spinning before you won your first contest? I'd been spinning my tops for a month. Just about a month. 
And, of course, like any good sportsman, he has here a, a great collection of tops of all sizes and shapes, many of which you will see. And so just pick one. And he's going to start out with what he calls an easy stunt. What, what, what is his first one? First trick is called the skyrocket. The skyrocket. All righty. <laughs> and there it goes. And whoops, up in his hand, and it's still spinning. <laughs> And if you think that trick is easy, the whole crew has been around here all early this evening trying not that trick, but just to get the top to spin. We've all forgotten how. All right, what's this next trick? next trick is called the boomerang. The boomerang. All righty. Oh. Didn't even touch the ground. How do you like that? Ha, ha, ha. Oh, ha, ha, ha. Oh, it's people. Who that trick? All right, that's the boomerang. <laughs> the boomerang. And, oh, this is the thing where, where we go for the marksmanship. Mm -hmm. All righty. I don't need my eyes much anyhow. A little lower? All right. Okay. Ready? <laughs> oh, you like that. <laughs> oh, boy. I let you know this skill like this amazes me much more than uh, being able to make an atomic bomb. I might be able to help figure out how to do that, but this I can never. <laughs> the next trick is called the mountain flying trapeze. Man on the flying trapeze. All right. Oh! And it is still spinning. That's impossible. Oh. That's impossible. <laughs> Funny, I had exactly the same reaction when I first saw him do it. I said, that's impossible. He said, no, that's not impossible. It's the next one that's impossible. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, all right, this is called one? The San Antonio Twist. San Antonio Twist. All right, now, you gotta, you got to follow this one closely because you won't believe it. All right, here we go. He catches it as he did before. Now watch him loop it around behind his back. Oh! He missed it. <laughs> that's all right. We got time. That's the first time he's missed. I've seen him do, do it three or four times. That's called a miss, and it's one of the easiest. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Now watch it now. There you go. Now around the back it goes. He catches Ooh. it again, and then up, and catches it again. Oh. Oh. And now one with. Well, we, we call this one the double boomerang. The double boomerang. I won't tell you what it is, but watch it closely because it has a kind of a surprise ending. You got a little little knot in there? All right. That's another problem in top spinning yeah. knots in the mm -hmm. string. <laughs> All right. Oh. <laughs> it separates. <laughs> Anyone? He is he is very generous with his talent. He has taught he has, he has taught me how to do it. I think. <laughs> I mean, just spin it. I'm not talking about anything fancy. I mean, just get from the top to spin it. Spent so many years, at least ten. <laughs> <laughs> good luck. <laughs> very good. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh, we're back on again? Friends, I'm so proud to have had this young man on. Let's give Rusty Stubing a special hand and we'll see you next time. With Palmer's Dress by William Pearson. Watch Danny Thomas and his gang tonight on most of these stations. Get me out.
down for? They're not going to applaud again. <laughs> Well, I just wanted you to open the show again because you opened it so beautifully, only we weren't on the air. Oh? Yeah, and uh, good luck. (laughs) Are you ready? Why did they shove me out here? Are we on? My name, Jose Fernandez. My name, Groucho Marx. Wow! I've got a secret brought to you tonight by Green Whip, the whipped coffee with country fresh flavor. From General Foods. Live from New York, here is I've Got a Secret, starring Gary Moore. Well, it's going to be a wild night, I can tell, just by the way it's starting. Good evening. Welcome to our show. And in spite of the kind of summer weather that we've been having here in New York for I don't know how long now, it's hard for us to realize that it is Halloween time. So let's meet the goblins on our panel. First, there's Bill Goblin and Betsy Spook (laughs) and ghastly, uh, ghostly Henry Morgan and bewitching Bess Myers. Now, panel, if you're all set, we're all set, and we'll welcome our first contestant, please. Will you come in, sir? Good evening. Nice to have you with us. Will you tell our panel, please, what your name is and where you're from? Charles Baxter, Brooklyn, New York. Charles Baxter from Brooklyn, New York. Now, panel, we've had a kind of a, a, kind of a tradition on this show invo- involving uh, Halloween pumpkins. A few years ago, we had a pumpkin with a light bulb powered by electric eels, if you'll remember. That was kind of oogie. And then the next year, we lit a pumpkin using an ordinary grapefruit as the power source. Actually, the acid in the grapefruit was converted into a battery. And this year, we're back with another pumpkin and another system. Mr. Baxter, will you...